seeing was actually the biggest problem with dark ether um <laughs> like like visibility was huge and so you know when when it was first um proposed as has been mentioned in prior interviews a big part of it was uh production savings right the idea being that we could take the same art art assets in one and do it in the other yeah so the first um the first stab at that was actually that the dark world the first concepts had the dark world being like a lot darker um it was like black as night and i remember this like the first concepts were essentially that you could barely see anything other than what was in the light bubbles and um the concepts had it so that everything was very um it, everything was very blurry as it was far out and then as it got closer and it got a lot more clear and so like the i remember one of the more striking um concepts was one where there was like a light bubble and then like an ing in front of it remember the ings the five legged horse guys and the ing was like very blurry in front of the light bubble. And it had this very like sort of horror, horror aspect to it. Um, and then as things got closer in, they'd be clearer. And so the other idea was that essentially uh, the world textures were the world textures on the, were going to be the same way. So uh, you weren't really going to see much of the world outside. But as you got closer, the um, it would almost become like a. Like the textures would still be from the same world, but they'd be like more like a mosaic. So think of it like, um, think of it like, like, you know, like when, uh, when, when TV shows show someone suffering from like heat stroke or something and, and everything looks palletized a little mm. bit. That's kind of what it was sort of going for was essentially that. But, you know, you think if, if you did that with like textures on the ground, then it would, they would kind of look more like a mosaic. Like if they were more palletized, if the color separations were bigger and, you know, in the concepts, a lot of the time, the only light really came from Samus or from her morph ball. And so um, we actually had this thing where basically sand, like the, the light was essentially a spotlight that was like a it was like a teardrop shaped spotlight that would come out of the front of Samus. And that's what she could kind of see. So the idea being that as you turned and looked, if there was like an ing in that teardrop, suddenly you would see him because he'd be black outside of it. And then as he got into that teardrop, you'd be able to see the enemy and the enemy would try to sort of flee or you would, you know, shoot it and kill it or whatever. But that being said, and those were awesome concepts, I was able to get something that actually looked really similar to that. And it was impossible to play. Like plat it destroyed platforming. You couldn't see where you were jumping. You couldn't see anything. And so suddenly, like all of the levels that were built for the light world were impossible to move around in in the dark world. So we we spent a lot of time trying to make it work. And then it was clear that no matter what we tried to sort of slap onto it, like it just wasn't going to happen. Like, like that, that aspect was not, we were not going to be able to share assets and have that same kind of thing. So it was at that point, I think that essentially um, the artists also realized that, if they wanted to do a dark world thing, they'd want to be able to customize things for the dark world. They, they didn't want to just like have it be some algorithmic, you know, change of textures without any control on their end, which makes total sense. Like, like if you're an artist and your art is built for one lighting model and one thing, and by the way, Todd Keller is like one of the best lighting guys in the business in terms of art direction you know, he's not going to want something that is now we're going to turn off the lights, make the main character spotlight and destroy the resolution of all your textures for half the game. So all of that was sort of then scrapped and Dark World became Purple World pretty much. And then uh, <laughs> <laughs> and so we had some stuff to allow for automatic, you know, texture not mutilation, but text, you know, like purpleizing of things automatically. And then they could customize other stuff uh as they see fit and so i think like the best way to see how that really works out is in god cliffside what what is cliffside called in the shipping game it's uh sanctuary some uh, what, uh, uh sanctuary fortress sanctuary fortress right the dark and light versions of that world in my opinion are amazing because it really shows if you build differently 
the um the lighting and texture models between both how you could take the same area and make it look really cool but really different but still know they're from the same core like that one i think was the one where the artists had the most time to really do more different because by then um i think some of the other areas like ag and waste and stuff had already had a lot built to it based on the old model so a lot of it just kind of got like purpleized and they moved forward but for like cliffside for for sanctuary fortress i feel like that's the best use of saying oh look we let the artists do different things in the different worlds and that's why it looks so stunning to me at least <laughs> 